this meeting is a primary meeting that school district board of trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this me meeting has been posted in accordance with Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code Chapter 551. The time is now 6 o'clock. If you will please rise with me while Mr. Husband is in his presentation. <coughs> Hope you join me tonight. Uh, first, we're going to have a, a moment of silence uh, in consideration of those that we lost in Florida, but also uh, closer to home here. Uh, we've had a loss in the, in the uh, retired educators field, uh, a true outstanding gentleman and an educator of the district for over 40 years. Mr. Kix Lamp passed away this past week, so I ask that you keep his family in mind. So let's have a moment of silence, and then I'll lead us in prayer if you so desire to join me. <clears throat> Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight in prayer, asking that you comfort, console, and assuage the anguish of families and the friends who lost their beloved children and teachers in Florida. We also ask tonight that you comfort the Lamp family in the passing of their patriarch and tremendous educator in this district for over 40 years. We don't always know why, Lord, but we do stand confident in knowing that you do. At the same time, we are very thankful for our community and give you the thanks and the praise for the safety net that you have placed on our children. We know that you expect us to have faith, but you also want us to be responsible by helping ourselves. With that in mind, we want to ask your continued cloak of protection over the administrators, the teachers, and the law enforcement professionals that strive daily to protect each and every child in our school district. Father, we also thank you that our district is so richly blessed in resources and talent and the desire to do the right thing. From the educators to those being educated, help us all continue to strive to be better, safer, more understanding, and of course, kinder to one another. Help us tonight, O oh Lord, with wisdom in our decision making and fairness to all that are concerned or affected by our decisions. Let us keep in mind, let us keep you in mind in all that we do. For it's in your name that we offer this prayer. Amen. Uh, from the Woodlands College Park Marine Corps JORTC, their first all-female color guard will be presenting the colors. Instructors are Major Cody Stewart, Sergeant Major Chris Combs, American Flag Bearer Cadet First Lieutenant uh, P Pupley, Texas Flag Bearer Cadet Staff Sergeant Ortiz, American Rifleman Cadet Private First Class McLaughlin, Texas Rifleman Cadet Second Lieutenant Williams. Attention for arms. Forward. March. Left, right. Left, right. Left, right. Order. Arms. Ready. Cut. Left. Face. Present. Arms. Right, left, right, left, right, 
left, right. Good evening, Board of Trustees. My name is Bob Horton, and I have the privilege of being the coordinator of fine arts on behalf of the over 300 fine arts teachers who impact the nearly 62,000 students of CISD. I want to thank you for your constant support of the arts. Connor ISD is recognized at the state and national level as a leader in the arts, and this is largely due to your commitment to a well-rounded education, which includes high-quality arts experiences. President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton, thank you for giving recognition to the 32 students who were named Texas Music Educators Association, TMEA, All-State Music Students from Conroe ISD. A word of explanation, the All-State process is a competitive one that begins throughout the, our entire state in 33 different TMEA regions. Individual musicians perform selections for a panel of judges anonymously who rank each instrument or voice part. From this ranking, a select group of musicians advances to an area round in eight different areas, and the highest ranking musicians from the area competitions qualify to perform in a TMEA All-State Choir, Band, or Orchestra. These All-State students participated this last week in a convention with rehearsals directed by nationally recognized conductors during the TMEA clinic and convention. Their performances on Saturday for thousands of attendees bring this extraordinary event to a close. Over 1,700 students are selected through a process that begins with over 68,000 students from around the state vying for this honor to perform in one of the uh, 15 Allstate ensembles. Less than 3% of the students who initially audition become Allstate musicians, and 32 of these students are from Conroe ISD. So as you can see, they are lined up along the wall, and I just want to take a moment to recognize, uh, before we call the students forward, their teachers who are here to support them. From Conroe High School Choir, Clay West and Emily Eisterhold. From Oak Ridge High School Choir, J.R. Smith and Brian Kay. From Oak Ridge Band, Dana Prottervand, Albert Vale and Gerald Dillard. From the Woodlands College Park Choir, Aaron Bodane and Kent Dorries. From the Woodlands College Park Band, Jeff Goring, Teresa Martin and Rob Savala and College Park Orchestra, Dr. Peter Kempter. From the Woodlands Choir, Patrick Newcomb, Kelly Martin, and Stephanie Biffle, and the Woodlands Band, Joni Perez, Andy Salmon, and Kyle Witte. Thank you, teachers, for the work that you do. Well, I believe almost all of our 32 are here tonight, so let's call them forward, please, and recognize them. Um, Allstate Orchestra, Chris Chan. Allstate Band, Ben Bowman. Also, All-State Band, but I don't know if he's here tonight, Tim Brantley. Don't see, don't see him yet. Okay. Um, All-State Band, Brandon Foskett. All-State Band, Kyle Hansen. All-State Band, Nathan Keene. All-State Band, Katie Kirkpatrick. All-State Band, Gracie Lime. All-State Band, Amrutha Murthy. All-State Band, Nathan Stanfield. All-State Band, Travis Stromberg. All-State 
Allstate Band, Brandon Wiley. And our final Allstate Band, Connor Zespin. Our Allstate Choir members, Aiden Adcock. Allstate Choir, Kendall Benasha. Allstate Choir, Jacob Burns. Allstate Choir, Aditya Chunangad. Allstate Choir, Derek Eugenio. Allstate Choir, Susan Falconer. Allstate Choir, Zach Fishman. Allstate Choir, Riley Glazeman. Allstate Choir, freshman Elise Incavo. Allstate Choir, Varsha Iyer. Allstate Choir, Maya Krishnan. Allstate Choir, Magnus Kroken. Allstate Choir, Aranza Perrette. Allstate Choir, Shelby Steele. Allstate Choir, Katie Stoby. Allstate Choir, Kayla Swan. Allstate Choir, Raymond Thompson. Allstate Choir, Ryan Walsh. And Allstate Choir, Kyler West. Thank you again, board, for your recognition. Congratulations, students, on an honor well deserved. On behalf of the board, we just want to say congratulations one more time. As a board and as a district, we take fine arts education very seriously. Um, it's one of the things that we are committed to. We understand how important it is to the holistic development of students. There's all kinds of scientific data uh, that show there are certain areas of the brain that only fire when music is present. Uh, there are certain areas of the brain that are stimulated and are more active in those who study music. So. This is a lifelong pursuit. Some of you may choose to become musicians, to pursue music as a career, and your parents may get mad at me for saying this, but that is a perfectly acceptable career path to choose. <laughs> the world needs musicians just like it needs engineers and doctors and lawyers and mechanics and whatever else you choose to do. We need people in this world who bring beauty and who bring harmony and bring inspiration and bring emotion into the world. Um, this week I've been reading this book and um, you know, if you get extra time with all the studying you have to do, I highly, I highly encourage you to read. It's called The Jazz of Physics. <clears throat> this is an amazing book. I kid you not. It's written by a physics professor from Brown University. And researchers have actually discovered what amounts to the echoes of the song of the, first, of the universe when it was first beginning billions of years ago. The universe actually made music as it was expanding. Um, and there's a scientific theory that it was those sound vibrations that actually caused matter to coalesce and create stars and planets. And the subtitle is The Secret Link Between Music and the Structure of the Universe. I encourage you to stay with music. Um, this is my, one of my favorite meetings every year because I, as the musician in the group, I get to get stand up here. Um, <laughs> I did not pursue music as a career, but music paid for my college, and there's not a day goes by that I don't play music. 
Music has taken me around the world, has allowed me to play for heads of state, and I don't get paid to do it. It's just something that I love, and I, I encourage you to stick with it. It will benefit you for the rest of your life. We're so proud of your accomplishments. I know how hard it is to become a TMEA All-State musician, and you truly are the best of the best, and the entire district is so proud of you. Thank you. Hey, Tim Brantley, we are so glad you're here and we are very proud of you. Ms. Godfrey, has anyone signed up to address the board? We have one person that signed up. All right. The next 30 minutes have been designated for public participation by patrons who have signed up to address the board in accordance with board policy BED. Please remember that the board may not discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on our agenda. The board has adopted complaint policies that are designed to secure, at the lowest administrative level, a prompt and equitable response resolution of complaints and concerns. These policies provide that if a resolution cannot be reached administratively, the person may appeal the administrative decision to the board as a properly posted agenda item. Copies of the district's complaint policies can be found on the district's website. Those who have registered to address the board will be limited to five minutes for their presentation. Delegations more than five must appoint one representative to present their views to the board. Ms. Godfrey, please call the first person who has signed up to address the board. Teresa DeMeo. Good evening. Um, oh, yeah, that would be a good idea. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good evening. My name is Teresa DeMeo. Um, I'm 16 years old, and um, I'll only take up about six minutes of your time, and I believe that it's worth the six minutes. Um, I am the Texas State Representative 
for a global organization called Be Strong Global, and it uh, works to prevent bullying. And it goes in and brings programs into schools, you know, to teach the kids and empower the kids to stand together as a team. Um, I know it may be surprising that I would stand here and be brave enough to ask you to listen to me. I would like to address the matter of school shootings. There are thousands of kids that attend the school zone in CISD. I know for a fact that my mother and I are not the only ones worried about this issue. Um, I'm aware that this is a difficult subject to talk about, but I'm not afraid to be the voice for the voiceless and bring up important matters no matter how difficult. On October 17th, 2017, the beginning of this school year, I was sitting at home on FaceTime with my best friend. He was expressing his feelings on the fact that he and I were being bullied and no one, no matter what we did or how hard we tried, no one would help us. He said that the adults who are supposed to be the people we can go to and be the people who listen to us don't help us and make us look like we are the ones with the problems because we ask for help in order to make kids act right. Um, oh, this is intimidating. <laughs> don't be nervous, you're fine. He um, told me that he wished that the boys would just die. He told me that he himself was thinking of, sh of shooting up the school just to make them stop. He also had access to weapons. Thankfully, I was FaceTiming him on my laptop, so I had the opportunity to record him with my cell phone. And um, I promised he could tell me anything and that I wouldn't tell anyone. Of course, I was lying. Um, but he also promised me that he would never hurt me or the ones I loved because I was always kind to him. And that's something I want you to think about. My kindness saved myself and 10 other people. Did I want to hear what he was telling me? No, but I was grateful that it was me because I knew that I would be brave enough to tell somebody. Um, after we got talking, I ran to my mom's room and I showed her the videos and she told me I had to call the police, and I did. I called the Montgomery County Sher Sheriff's Department and the CISD police. They took information and told me that they would call me back. They called me back and told me that they talked to him. Just talked to him. At this point, he was devastated, scared, alone, angry, sad, and confused. The last thing I got to say to my best friend was, I love you and I'm sorry, but this is the right thing. This could have been the very last rice grain to tip his scale. He lost his only friend. I broke his trust and did what was right for nothing. Do I regret it? No, but it breaks my heart to know that it was all for nothing. So I'm dedicated to make sure that the kids who died in Florida and, and other school shootings didn't die for nothing. My mother and I wanted to ensure that we did all we could to protect students of Oak Ridge. So we emailed the principals and counselors about the issue with attached videos of the students saying what he said. I called everybody I knew and begged them to stay home and even told their parents what was going on. Some people even made fun of me and told me I was being paranoid. Neither the principal nor counselor responded to our email and they did nothing. I later found out from a friend that something was done. That something was giving the kid a couple of days in ISS on campus. CISD claims it does all it can to protect their students and teachers. I believe that what they did was not enough. This is not an insult to CISD. This is a plea for help. Help me help you. Help me to help the students and teachers. It is never enough when protecting lives. Everyone needs to listen to kids more. We are not just kids. We are people with opinions and feelings just like each of you. I feel that adults forget that or they are too busy. Adults should never be too busy to listen to the cries of hope from kids. Everyone <coughs> needs to listen to kids more. It is not just girl drama. It is not just boys being boys. We should not have to just survive high school. We deserve to be able to come to a place where we can learn and be ourselves and be proud to call that place our school. My best friend felt alone and helpless 
And that is what sparked the school shooting idea into his head. He did not want to kill people. He wanted help. He wanted to be hurt. So I ask you, no, I actually beg you to stop, stop shutting kids out. Listen when they come for help. Listen to them when they need a shoulder to cry on. Do not belittle the issues by making them feel crazy or just telling them it will go away or to have thicker skin. Don't arm our teachers with weapons. Arm our teachers with resources for kids who are hurting. Arm them with more time to get to know their students so that they can make a difference in their lives. My eighth grade teacher saved my life. They stopped me from committing suicide because of issues at home and being bullied. They saved my life because they showed me someone cared and that I was being heard. We need more people like that in schools. I don't believe guns kill people. I believe our actions and words kill people. Our actions and our words spark people into picking up weapons and killing people. I believe CISD needs to do more to protect its teachers and its students, such as putting up metal detectors. It breaks me to know this needs to happen, but I want people to be safe. Teach our teachers and students more tactic tactics to stay safe. Equip your teachers with knowledge and the power to help <coughs> children. I believe that we can work to create a better and safer environment for kids. And I also believe we have the ways to do it. I brought flyers for Be Strong, if you want to look into that. And uh, that's all. Thank you for your time. First, I want to tell you that I appreciate you coming before us. And as I said, unfortunately, we can't address this as it is not a posted item. However, the courage you have had to stand before the seven of us and address us with the passion and the respect is very appreciated. And I appreciate where you're coming from. So thank, thank you. you. Item three, the consent agenda. I have hired uh, no requests to remove any items. I move we approve the consent agenda as presented. I second. All right, all those in favor? All right, consent agenda is passed. Item four A, name principal of Snyder Elementary, Dr. Stockton. <clears throat> this, um, when this item comes up at the, at the board meetings, this is always a very special item because we um, are blessed to have great teachers and we know leadership is just critical to the success of our school. So um, I've always taken this very seriously and am very proud tonight to recommend you, uh, Crystal Poncho, to be the next principal of Snyder Elementary School. All right. We have a recommendation. Do I have a motion? So moved. I second the motion. <laughs> any, any discussion? Out of my mouth. All right. All those in favor? All right. Congratulations, Ms. Poncho. Thank you, President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. Thank you for this opportunity. I am so humbled and honored to accept the position of, Pride, of Snyder Elementary, where every day students strive for success, accomplishment, leadership, unity, teamwork, and excellence. I will continue to build upon the strong foundation of Snyder Elementary by always putting students first, <laughs> building positive relationships with students, staff, and the community, and continuing the great works of Dr. Ann K. Snyder through philanthropy. I would like to acknowledge my mentors of Conroe ISD who have guided and molded me into the leader that I am today. Principal Lindsay Ardwan, Dr. Edith Upshaw, and Dr. Christine Butler. And I would also like to introduce my biggest supporters, my family, mm -hmm. my husband, Brandon, and my son, Braxton, mm -hmm. and my parents, John and Linda. Thank you.
<laughs> that was perfect timing, Braxton. We know you probably want to go celebrate. You're welcome to stay for the rest of our agenda, but if y'all want to leave, we certainly understand and don't take any disrespect. So. That's perfect. Item 5A, consider approval of the guaranteed maximum price amendment for the new K-6 school in the Oak Ridge Feeder Zone, Flex 19, Dr. Stockton. Okay, this time I'll ask Easy Foster to come and present that item. Good evening, President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. It's my pleasure to bring forward for your consideration and approval the guaranteed maximum price amendment for a new K-6 elementary school in the Oak Ridge Feeder Zone, which we'll refer, refer to as Flex 19. On April 18th of 2017, uh, we selected Marshall Construction Company as our CM at risk for this particular project, Flex 19. Since then, we've advertised and take proposals from the marketplace and has since negotiated a guaranteed maximum price for this school of $24,986,119. At this time, we're requesting your approval of the guaranteed maximum price. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you, Mr. Foster. Item 5B, consider award of RFQ 18-01-01, two-way radios for transportation department. Dr. Stockton. Dr. Hines, if you'll come and present this item. You will. Good evening, President Bush, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. Tonight, uh, we are requesting uh, your, your approval that we award uh, RFQ 18-01-01 for two-way radios to Motorola Solutions, um, which is selected through the HGAC cooperative contract for an estimated expenditure of $975,967.88 and authorize our superintendent to execute any documents necessary uh, to carry this out. Uh, to give you a little background, we have a radio group and some are here today and I want to make sure I introduce them. Uh, we have in the back uh, Bob King and uh, Sam Davila, Director of Transportation, Sergeant Matt Blatelock, and Steve Muir. Uh, we've all worked on this together. Actually, we've been talking about this for a while, uh, really <coughs> going back to when we did the police radio um, acquisition a couple of years ago and looking at specs. And uh, we were trying to re achieve a solution that identified several goals. We wanted a system that enables us to maintain the safest environment for students and drivers that on our buses and um, allows us direct to directly communicate to our police department in the event of emergencies without going through a patching system. Um, we also wanted to improve our coverage, and so uh, this solution is going to take advantage of the county's robust towers, which are also very reliable um, during emergencies. Um, it also utilizes the latest digital technology, uh, as this is going to be a long-time solution for us. Um, and uh, we think it's also expandable as we grow. Uh, there were five, there were, the requests were sent out to several vendors that are in co-ops. There were five that submitted responses that met the specifications, and we're recommending Motorola, which had the, the best price of the five. Hmm. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. All right, any discussion? Yeah, you say that was the lowest? I thought you had two others that were lower. Those were that the didn't meet the specifications. Okay, gotcha. So All those right. are the, the lowest of the questions. ones that met our specs. Yeah, I understand that y'all been researching this for quite a while. We've been looking at radios for a while. And there's several yeah, you know, there's several that. good products out there we've looked at. So Go ahead. And, it, and it's not just the radios. If I understand correctly, you know, you can have a, a private system. You know, you mentioned the robust towers. In other words, we have a very large school district. It's not up and down a freeway corridor like some school districts are. And so being on the county system in the in the depths of the woods in east, west, north, or south county, it works all the time, every time, because it works. It's the same system that the police use, not the same encryption, not the same channel. I don't right. mean to imply that, but right. the same type of system. Right? Correct. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Hines, I, and I just want to clarify too, I think you mentioned that you said no patches, which, and that we have direct contact with law enforcement. I, I know during Hurricane Harvey and even back before we had several kind of uh, disasters, uh, that sometimes it gets difficult using cell towers and stations and especially private 
and this eliminates and avoids all of that is my understanding. It does. We do have to pay a, a tower use fee and a, and a monthly fee to the county, but um, it really puts us out of the tower business and right. takes advantage of a really widespread coverage. Uh, I have a map of the coverage if you wanted to see it, but it's generally covers countywide and I'm sure there's probably a dead spot here and there but we have several dead spots currently so uh, well, this will be a 48 square mile school yeah, district <laughs> this will be a significant improvement to cover to for us. Yes. Okay. okay thank you thank you anything else no. all right all those in favor motion passes thank you <clears throat> item 5c receive capital improvement updates dr stockton easy foster if you'll come back <laughs> Good evening again. This time I'd like to bring you an update on our capital improvements that we have underway throughout the district. I'm going to start with Grand Oaks High School. Grand Oaks is scheduled to open in August of 2018. It's currently on schedule. As you can see from this picture from earlier this month, the site details are starting to take, take shape. The turn lanes in off the Grand Parkway are, are open and usable at this point. Uh, this athletic venues, things like that, the fire lanes, all the, all the things you can see around the building are taking shape. You can see the uh, masonry work working its way around the building. We're focusing in on the front and the back doors currently, so we're about 90% uh, completely closed in, which allows us to work on the inside of the building as well. Wow. What we're going to show you tonight is a little bit of the life of the of the system of the building come come to short come to fruition. So you're looking here at the uh, softball turf installation that's been completed since the picture previously was was taken earlier this month. On the inside of the building, you're seeing some of the colors and the life and the school spirit show up. This is one of the practice gymnasiums as it's coming together. And then in our restrooms, we're, we're seeing fixtures, we're seeing toilet partitions, we're seeing all the finishes come along nicely on the inside of that building. Moving on to Catherine Johnson Clark Intermediate. Uh, this school is also scheduled to open in August of 2018. It is on schedule. And much like Grand Oaks, the focus is now on the front door of the building and getting that building closed in. Uh, it is approaching or is proceeding just as we would plan it to and is currently on schedule. On the inside of the building, the finishes are starting to take their shape. So you're looking at a picture of the, the library from the interior mm -hmm. as it's coming together. And then looking down the hallways, we're starting with uh, some of the paint finishes and bringing the, the spirit into this campus as well. Now our life cycle 2018 project was one that was uh, recently kicked off. Uh, this. For the past month or so, we've been working at our north maintenance facility on the re-roof of that building there. And while we're doing this, we're also planning the work that will take place over spring break. So we're making use of the breaks as we lead in uh, to get as much work done when the students aren't in campuses as we can. So we'll bring you some pictures of that after the, at the next board meeting. As we move forward, we're getting uh, gearing up and planning, master planning for our summer work. So like I said, making use of the time when the students are not on campus. At Connor High School, we're doing a building addition that will facilitate a major renovation of the main campus building. Uh, you can see from this photo, the, uh, the building addition is moving along, moving along nicely. It is scheduled to be complete and ready for our use at the end of this year, so in December of 2018. Uh, then we'll really in earnest be working through the main portion of the building, doing the major mechanical renovations in the main campus. <coughs> This is a photo of our central plant. Like I say every month, it is the heartbeat of the mechanical upgrades that are going on in the system. The building is largely complete, working on the roofing of it now. And the, but the big, big item to tell you about this month is the equipment is in place. So it's being hooked up and worked on so that we're ready to fire it up and use it when, when the new building is ready to come online. And that is our update. All right. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Item 6A, consider award of RFP 17-01-018, Contracted Educational Services, Professional Development, and Educational Consulting Services. Dr. Stockton. Hey, Darren Rice, if you'll come and present uh, the next two items, please. Yes, good evening, President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. Uh, tonight I am recommending that the uh, Board of Trustees consider awarding RFP 17-01-01A, uh, Contracted Educational Services, Professional Development, and Educational Consulting Services, February 2018, to the 13 vendors listed on the attached tabulation for an estimated annual expenditure of $8,000. Thus far, 202 vendors out of an estimated 350 have been awarded since June of 2017. 
This amount is included in the previously awarded annual estimate of $1.5 million. Service contracts with awarded vendors will remain firm through February 28, 2019, with an option to renew annually for four additional one-year terms through February 28, 2023. And at this time, I recommend your approval. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. Item 6B, receive financial reports. Mr. Rice. All right, I'm here this evening to present the financial statements for the district for the month of January. Uh, these statements will include the general fund, debt service, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. Uh, the first statement we'll look at this evening is the balance sheet, and the balance sheet includes our assets, liabilities, and fund balances of the district. Each month, we like to look at the cash and investments of the district. As you can see, if we concentrate here on the general fund, we have cash on hand of $500. Uh, we have bank deposits of $82,000. Uh, we have investments in the state pools of $2,234 million. We have short-term investments, that's investments less than a year, of $59.4 million. We have our investments, our longer-term investments with TCG Investment Advisors at $51.9 million for total cash and investments of $345.3 million. The next statement we'll look at is our income statement. The income statement includes our revenues and expenditures for the district. Revenues are broken down into three categories, their local and intermediate sources, our state program revenues, and federal program revenues. And looking at the detail of our local and intermediate sources, we can see that property taxes are the largest generator of revenues in the general fund and debt service fund, uh, food sales and food service, and premium contributions and self-funded insurance. Now we're just looking at a, a projected increase to our fund balance in the general fund of, of approximately $5 million. Child nutrition, about 970000 Now we're looking at the 2015 bond referendum status update for January. We've currently expended or encumbered $347.4 million. We have an estimate to complete of $166.4 million of the bond program uh, in that you can see y'all just approved uh, Flex 19, so that's about $28 million of that. And we still uh, have the new junior high pro program out there to, to encumber and stuff. So, so those are the big estimates that we still have out there. So giving us a total project forecast of $513.8 million, leaving us with a contingency of about $6.4 million in the program for, our, for the total of our $520 million bond program. Uh, Self-funded insurance. Uh, January uh, was our first month we're showing a loss, but as we know, the flu was out there big time. So, so it hit us. Um, but for the year, we're still looking good. Total revenues of right at $20 million. Uh, our total expenses of a little over $17 million for revenues over expenses of about $3 million. So the plan is performing well this year. And I would like to say our participation at our wellness centers are really doing well. You can see the last two months, we're right around the $600. $600 participant figure, so that's real nice for those programs. <laughs> it was bad news statistic, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> our investments for the month, uh, total par value of our portfolio is $714.9 million. Uh, the pools are yielding about 1.5%. Our shorter term investments, this is less than a year, about 1.73%. Uh, our longer term investments with TCG Investment Advisors is 1.35%, giving us a combined portfolio of 49 days of WAM, and uh, we're yielding about 1.52% in the portfolio. And our benchmark, which is the 90 day T bill, is at 1.43%. All right. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Item 7A receive information about local policy manual update 110. Uh, yeah. Mrs. Glantz. Thank you, Dr. Stockton. This was um, a small update. I know you all were shocked when you picked your thing up that it wasn't, you know, hundreds of pages long. It only contains one local policy, um, and it, it, the, the revisions to the legal policies really are all prompted by the legislative session, and it really just reorganized the B section, um, which deals with the board and particularly the election section of that to make it more user-friendly is the hope. The local policy, which we will ask you to adopt next month, um, streamlined it, added some information from old things, and just included details about your terms when your elections are and things like that. If you have any questions about it, as I know you've been pouring over the next month before we ask you to adopt it, feel free to call me. 
Thank you, Ms. Gladys. A closed session of the board will now be held on matters contained in the notice for this meeting as authorized by Section 551.074 of the Texas Open Meetings Act. Should the board determine that any final action, final decision, or final vote be required with regard to any matter considered in such closed session or executive meeting or session, then such final action, final decision, or final vote shall be at either this public meeting upon the reconvening of this public meeting or at a subsequent public meeting of the board upon notice thereof, as the board shall determine. A closed session of the board will now be held. It is 646.